<sighs> Alright, welcome back guys. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to fly fish for bluegill. Um, it's not a very commonly done thing, but if you have a light little four or five weight fly rod, it's honestly probably one of my favorite things to do. So, it's pretty simple. It just goes to your main fly line, which is that bright green line there. And then instead of using like a pre-made tapered leader, I just tie on some 12 pound test right to there. And then it comes all the way down to a double uni knot with some eight pound test. And then for bluegill, I do a dry dropper to a nymph. So you've got just your eight pound test coming down, a little floating grasshopper so you can get those top water bites. And then it's only eight inches down from that. I just have a little nymph. And a lot of the times the bluegill will come up and eat this one and you'll just see this one go down. It kind of works as an indicator so you can see your bites if they bite on this one. Let's go catch some fish. So when you're so when you're looking for these spots to fly fish, it's really quite simple. If you're fishing a super grassy lake, you want to find an area that's kind of grassy, or not that's grassy, that's sandy. Um, so this entire lake is basically just filled with that green grass right there, and it's just super dark. But there's this spot right here from people taking their dogs in the water where you've got sand and stuff and they can spawn on that sand so what you're going to do is you're going to find an area that's got sand i don't want to catch a fish quite yet um so you want to find an area that's got sand or gravel and they really don't seem to spawn in very deep of water. A lot of times you can just be fishing in like three feet, four feet at the max. And typically when you're fly fishing for them, I'll twitch it, I'll cast it out, twitch it just a couple times, and then I'll pull it back in because it's really just that initial that initial like smack of it here's a fish there you go there's the first fish of the day so that one did not bite the dry fly but it bit the the nymph so I saw the I could see the grasshopper up top start to go down and i knew i saw the grasshopper start to go down and i knew that there was a fish biting on the nymph so that's when you set the hook if you're ever bluegill fishing or any type of pan fish fishing especially with a fly rod make sure you have a pair of these lightweight pliers they help a lot so that's a female that's a female bluegill she's full of eggs right now the holy crap the water's like a heck of a lot warmer than i thought it's like 60 something degrees she'll smack of the there's a the fish it's the It's the initial smack on the surface of the water that gets you most of your bites because if you cast out and your fly's just sitting there, like doing nothing on the surface of the water, the fish aren't going to come up. Well, most of the times, in my experience, the fish aren't going to come up and bite it. You're going you're gonna to be having to like wiggle it around or do something a lot of people will strip their line like they'll cast out and then they'll sit there and go like this 
For bluegill, it works sometimes, but most of the times what you want to do instead of like pulling it, you want to just be doing like inch by inch, like just barely moving it just so it makes a little ripple on the water. You may need to swap out your fly, but that's really the, the last resort. Normally, Normally your fly isn't the problem. Normally it's just that there's not a whole lot of fish in the spot you're fishing. No freaking way. I just had a bass, I was reeling in, I don't know if you guys could see that, but I was reeling in and I had a bass come up and smack it as I was reeling it across the surface of the water. That was, I have never had anything like that happen. Oh, one just did it again. Got him. No, I lost him. Oh my gosh. You gotta be kidding me, I can't believe that just happened. All right, I will not lose him now. There's one. Nice little bluegill, a bit on the nymph again. I think I need to be fishing really as shallow as possible, but I'm standing here at the bank and I can see like three foot deep water right here and I don't see, oh, I have one. I didn't even know I had one. Fish on! <laughs> one of the smallest fish of the day, probably. Be free! Hopefully it's theirs and not his. Yeah. Is this your camera? Yeah. Oh, it's not. It does, there's. Here I am flexing for you. How's that? All right, here we go. That makes sense. It's theirs and not his. Yeah. Is this your camera? Yeah. Oh, it's not. It does, there's. Here I am flexing for you. How's that? All right, here we go. That makes sense. That's how you fly fish for bluegill. It's pretty simple. Um, 
the main thing that matters is you don't want to have a big hook. That is like the number one thing. I'll show you guys the size hook that I'm using on these flies. It's not it's not a big fly at all. This is the fly. I'm not sure what size it is and all that, but it's literally it is a tiny hook. Like it's half the size of my fingernail, the entire hook. And then the fly, the hook on the nymph is even smaller. So it's not you don't the number one thing is don't have big hooks and your spot. Your fly and actual fly pattern doesn't really matter at all. I've come down here with flies I tied my own that are just like random weird rainbow flies and they've eaten they've eaten them a bunch so it doesn't really matter your fly doesn't really exactly matter it's more of it's more of your spot alrighty well I hope you guys liked that video hopefully it helped you guys in learning how to fly fish for bluegill it's pretty simple you just dry fly to a dropper 10 inch dropper to a nymph and then the main thing just covering water you don't want to stay at one spot for very long if you cast in for like 10 seconds I literally instantly just pick up my line and cast out again to maybe four feet over to the left or to the right or out maybe a little bit farther bluegill are kind of opportunistic eaters so they're not really gonna pass up on something unless they can see that you've got like 15 pound tens, test line on your little fly so you want to make sure you got like eight pound test or something lower than that if you guys have any questions or anything or you're unsure about maybe what you should buy for flies or what rod you should buy or what line um, I will leave a link Oh, I'll leave a bunch of links in the description of what fly rod I have in the line and where you can buy some flies, the exact flies I'm using here today. Um, if you have any other com or questions, you can comment them and I'll reply. And yeah, see you on the next video. Hopefully it's theirs and that is. Yeah. Is this your camera? Yeah. Oh, <laughs>